You sort of, it's really nice to objectify men. Is she like Elvis? I'm not. My <laughs> voice isn't like Elvis, but I'll tell you what. The songs I know are just Daisy Jones songs. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our channel, where we bring you the latest on your favorite celebrities, films, and TV shows, and we're not afraid to get a little sassy while doing it. If you're a fan of Daisy Jones and The Six and enjoy a good chuckle, you will want to skip this video that captures the most hilarious moments of Riley Keough in her interviews. Riley is absolutely hilarious, and her laugh is just infectious. Her charming girl next door vibe is so endearing that you can't help but want to spend time with her and laugh along with her. You know, stadium tour. So what what was that like to film? And did you guys actually feel like rock stars? Okay, so <laughs> we, this isn't funny. I don't know why I was laughing. Um, <laughs> During her appearance on Seth Meyers' show, Riley shared a hilarious anecdote about the creators of Daisy Jones and the Six throwing a legit concert for the band. She also revealed how she was feeling while performing at that gig. I think they wanted it to feel like friends or family. Gotcha. We walked in the room and it was just like, you know, a corporate. <laughs> how many people would you say were there in your audience for your concert? I think I blacked out, but I, yeah. it might have been like... Uh, I feel like I've said that in every interview I did. People think I have like a drinking problem. Um, <laughs> the confetti can In a game where the Daisy Jones and the six cast had to guess emojis, Riley Keough's comical gestures to describe her emoji made everyone burst into fits of laughter. The shower. The shower. Eyes. Fuck guys. Kind of bored. Shot. I was completely fooled when I thought the band in the show was actually a legitimate band. It wasn't until Riley let me in on the secret that they were just made up. The show was so well done that I was totally taken in. And it's, it's based on a best-selling book by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it's sort of the rise and fall of the most uh, famous band in the 70s, a fake band. <laughs> we shot all of it over like two weeks, right? One week. One week, oh my god. One week and it was all night shoots, so we it were- felt like a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Riley shared a surprising fact about Sam Claflin that left everyone stunned. Despite being caught off guard, Sam Claflin joined in with Riley to laugh about the incident, making it a humorous moment. It's supposed to be the week before. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we don't talk about that Oh my week. gosh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was all night shoots. <laughs> Sam got COVID. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> I just had to tell him. I don't, I don't, I don't know where it came Sam. from. <laughs> no one else seemed to get it. I don't know why. So we just every day getting to work with people who are, you know, I'm excited to see. Um, and uh, yeah. Seconded. Other than Sam. Seconded, yeah. <laughs> but not Sam. <laughs> I hate Sam too. <laughs> Even though she's commonly recognized as the granddaughter of Elvis, it would be great if she received more recognition for her acting skills. She's incredibly gifted, humorous, and stunning. But I know I know certain things are gonna happen. Like when I met my husband, I um he came out of the ga the gas station on like our second date, and I thought I'm gonna marry him and have kids with him. And I just knew. We didn't even say I love you yet. At what point did you tell him that? It certainly wasn't that point. I was. <laughs> I thought if I tell him now, he will leave me here in Australia and at the gas station. <laughs> Go back in um, your trailer. I don't, I'm sorry for telling. No, I, I, that. I mean, no, it's, no. there's no shame in These COVID. things happen, as we all know. Yeah. <laughs> Riley told a funny story about how the cast of Daisy Jones and the Six set up a small store on set to pass the time during a lockdown. So I opened a little shop in my trailer. So really off script. No. I'm, we're going off script. We're being honest. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think producers were invited to the shop. Right? They weren't. Oh <laughs> they didn't know about this. It was a liability. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to stop there. <laughs> and like, I remember going into the studio and we're always like, you know, got to be on time, got to be punctual. And everyone's late, you know, and, and I go to it. <laughs> Riley Keough revealed her experience working with musicians in the show for the first time. And you know what? We found out that actors are never fashionably late. They're always on time. To them, it's not very, you know, it's like 15 minutes, but to me, I, like coming from film, I'm like, oh my God, like it's the day, it's a disaster. You right. Know? I remember that, like being like, okay, like what time's lunch? And they were like, I mean, whenever, like you're hungry. <laughs> and I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I need like structure. I need, um, 
Riley spent a significant amount of time trying to explain what a sloth is to everyone. How do you even convey the essence of that fuzzy creature with just gestures? It's definitely an emoji that requires some serious verbal finesse. Oh, 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 like the ledge, the ledge. The, the ledge? Like Are you okay? Horns? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, did you the, just the horns, your the, the devil demon? Cat? Fun cat? Fun Funny 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 Riley, Riley, Are you oh, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that Riley found her life partner while working on the set of Mad Max Fury Road. During a chat with Komen, he asked her to choose between himself and her spouse in a picture, but poor Riley couldn't come up with an answer. Mad Max, and I was thinking, how did you see that guy? <laughs> Put that picture up again. How did you see that guy and go, that's the guy for me? See if you find me more attractive. That's oh my God. <laughs> Right. I don't know which one's worse. Yeah. <laughs> which one's oh, worse? You mean which one's sexier? Is that, what you that's mean. what I meant. Sorry. So Riley, so I've heard you. I've heard you truly dream about making a certain kind of movie. What is it? I think it's a kind of movie I don't watch because I'm scared. It's. Oh, you mean when when I was little? Riley had a humorous conversation on the Kelly Clarkson show about how she has enjoyed making movies since she was a child. Like Riley, many of us used to direct our dolls when we were young. You want to make horror films? I made lots of horror films. Do you? I made their finished. Okay. <laughs> at what Where age? Are they? At what age were you making horror films? Well, I think I discovered that ketchup could be blood, and then I kind of ran with it for about three years. And um... you were a fun <laughs> kid. <laughs> yeah. And now, though, you're on set with your husband, uh, you know, simulating. Yeah. But uh, intercourse was yeah. that more or less awkward? It was more awkward. Yeah, I bet. It was more. Awkward because I think it Riley Keough had a chat about shooting intimate scenes with her real life partner for the show, but it seems like she might have had second thoughts about it. It's all a bit of a laugh, really. We got there and they're like, this is it, like, this is really uncomfortable because yeah. I mean, you don't like, for one, I've never had pretend sex with my husband. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We were like in this scene, I'm not really in enjoying it. Yeah. And, and I feel like I really kept feeling inclined to be like, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this. Is, is this Riley for? here? And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh my God, sorry. This is right. Cursed. No, you can't. I googled say before I came on your show that you don't like when people curse on your show. So I've been real. <laughs> so why would you do that? I didn't mean to. <laughs> when I sat down, I was gonna say I'm sorry in advance if I if I say any bad words. <laughs> and I saw your, your wedding pictures are so cute. Oh, thanks. He's a stuntman. Mm -hmm. How did you guys meet on set? We met. Um, like by craft services? Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. It was a hilarious moment when Riley introduced her husband to the interviewer. I can't help feeling envious of her wedded bliss. And he's also the cutest guy ever. Oh, thanks. He, he, oh my god, hi Ben. <laughs> I'm looking at you in a tuxedo, but you look good in both a t-shirt and a tuxedo. <laughs> so you guys met at craft services. I'm making up the story in my head. We met at craft services. And like that, it was... Pretty much just dropped straight to my name. Yeah, and then we got married. And he's, he's a foreigner, too. Yeah. Right here. There you go. <laughs> Riley is the real deal. No inherited success here. She's put in more effort than a snail climbing a mountain because it's her own unique path. Her future is looking bright, so get your sunglasses ready. I well, I have to say they did one of the one of the questions they asked me when I signed on was, "Will you play? Uh, would you go on tour?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." You know, you kind of just like. Sure. Lie to get jobs. So um, but now uh, you have to go on now, tour. Here I am now on tour. No, um, I, yeah. Uh, the oh, first tapestry. episode, you yeah. have that amazing scene yeah. coming out of the. Why are you looking at me like that? I love you. I just think you're... Riley was totally freaking out when Camilla Morone started spilling the beans about the show. You can't really blame Camilla though. She is the beating heart of the whole story. The song, yeah, it was like, uh, um, um, Dream a Little Dream of Me. Well, because my character cries so much yeah. in this show. Don't spoil it. No, I know. Well, 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 like, <laughs> well, I kind of know. <laughs> she was giving COVID to people. No. <laughs> Do you want a week no. off work? Do you want a week <laughs> off work? I, I was I giving everyone B12. Shots. It was really wholesome and, you know, it got us through the night. While talking to Jimmy Fallon, Riley provided an amusing opening to her movie, It Comes at Night, resulting in both Jimmy and the viewers bursting into laughter. So this was like, it's kind of even deeper than that, because you don't think it's like, oh, it's a zombie. It's just like, how do you deal with what could be the end of the world? Yeah. And how freaked out you get in your yeah, own head. Yeah, well, it's really, I think it's about human behavior and yeah. kind of in crisis. Um, in crisis and fear and, you know, very topical. It's good. It's spooky. <laughs> I want to show everyone. <laughs>
Do you find Riley Ko's sense of humor amusing? Personally, I can't wait to watch her showcase her comedic skills in upcoming shows or films. Her acting abilities are truly remarkable, and she is bound to leave a lasting impression on her audience. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments section below and show your support by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. Catch you later. You dropped the bomb on I'm me, sorry. man. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I don't care. I don't care. Okay, you can good. say it if you feel like saying it. Really? Hey, man. I, I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs>